Now, an inventory system just isn't some backpack that holds all of our inventory items. It can be anything that you put your mind into. Let's take the board game of Scrabble. The inventory is a piece of wood that the letters sit on. We can rearrange the letters in the inventory, and then when we remove them from our inventory, we can place them on the board. Video games like Cats Organized Neatly, which was created in Game Maker, uses a cardboard box as your inventory. The items are the cats and the belongings, which you can organize neatly within that box. Other video games like Forger and Apico not only use an inventory system for the player, but also for the buildings and treasure chests. In today's video, we're going to be accomplishing two different things. First, we're going to be creating an inventory system by combining arrays and structs to make an easy to understand yet extensive system. Then we will take a look at a user interface and then we will be implementing the inventory system that we just built, giving you a head start on creating your game. Now, before we switch over to Game Maker, let's talk about what it actually means to add an item into the inventory. First, we're going to need an array to hold all of our items. We can call this inventory items. Next, we'll need a function to add the items into the array. And for this, we can call it item add. This function will be responsible for not only adding the items to the array, but also updating them. We will also create another function called item find in order to help us find the existing items. And finally, if an item is brand new in our inventory, we'll use a new function called item set, which will set the item and its parameters. So let's take this knowledge and switch over to Game Maker. We'll create a new script file, and we're going to call this one Inventory with a capital I. Now before I add my variables and functions into the script, I'm going to have to change it into a struct. This will allow us to encapsulate all the variables and functions into a single struct. It also makes it easier to import into other systems or other games. It can give us the power to create an inventory system for the player, building, or a treasure chest. Now all we actually have to do is come up to the top and add the keyword constructor to the function call. Now let's go ahead and add the empty array for inventory items. Let's create the item set function and this is going to take three parameters. It's going to take the name, the quantity, and sprite. In this function we'll call the array push command by passing in the inventory items. The inventory struct is going to consist of the name, the quantity and sprite that we've passed in. Now that we know what our item struct looks like, we can create the item find function. This function will accept the name parameter, and now we need to loop through the entire array, comparing the parameter that we passed in to the name that's found in their struct. If we find a match, we'll return the index of that item. If we finish looping through the entire array and we didn't find the name, we can return a negative one to signify that we didn't find the item. Now with that function all done, let's write the item add function. This function is gonna take the same three parameters as the item set, which is the name, the quantity, and sprite. First, let's check to see if we already have the item in our inventory. We can use the item find command by passing in the name. Remember that this function will return a number greater or equal to zero if the item has been found. If it hasn't been found, we can expect a negative one. So knowing that, we can check to see if our index is greater or equal to zero. And if it is, it means that we already have the item in our inventory. So all we need to do is increase the quantity by adding the quantity parameter to the item's parameter. In the else statement, this means that we didn't find the item, so let's call the item set function and pass in the name, the quantity, and the sprite. And now our inventory is actually all set up, but we don't really have a good way to show it to the player. So let's create a toString function that will help us debug the struct. This function will be automatically called anytime we ask GameMaker for a string version of our inventory system, such as using a show debug message. Now, for our case, all I want to do is I want to take the inventory items and return it as a JSON string so I can read it in the output tab. Now we're all done with the inventory and I've already created a object. Let's add this object to the room by opening up the room, selecting the instances layer, and then dragging and dropping the object into the layer. Now we can switch back and open up the object inventory and the create event. Let's also maximize the window. 
We need to instantiate the inventory struct, so let's create a local variable called inventory and set it to a new inventory. Remember, our inventory struct has an uppercase i, and our local variable has a lowercase i. This means that anytime I want to reference any of the functions, variables, or anything within that struct, I need to reference the inventory with the lowercase letter. For example, let's add three pieces of wood into our inventory. We can do this by calling the item add function and passing in the name, the quantity, and the sprite. Now let's also add two more pieces of wood just to test our function. And finally, we'll add 10 pieces of stone. Remember, we don't have a user interface built yet, but we can use a show debug message to see the contents of our inventory array. Now when we run our game, if you've been following along, you should see the contents of your inventory in the output tab. You should have at least five pieces of wood and 10 pieces of stone. Now everything is working as it should, but we need a way to subtract the items. Once again, let's take a step back and talk about what it means to remove an inventory item. First, we're going to need a function to check the quantity of an item that we want to use or remove. We'll call this item has. We also need a way to subtract the item from our inventory. So we can call this function item subtract. And finally, if we need to remove an entire item from our array because the quantity is less or equal to zero, we'll use a function called item remove. With these three functions, we can return to GameMaker and start coding. So let's open up the script file again and create the item has function. This function is going to take the name and the quantity to check. First, let's find the item by using the item find function, passing in the name. Using the same checks as above, we can determine if we found the item or not. If we found the item, let's check the quantity of that item in comparison with the quantity that we're passing in. If it is greater or equal to the quantity that we're passing in, we can simply return true. Otherwise, we can return false for our function. Now moving on to the item subtract function, we're going to use the name and the quantity to subtract. Just like before, we need to find the item and check to see if it exists. We can also use the item has function to check to ensure that we have enough of the item before we actually subtract it. If we have returned true, meaning that we have enough of the item that we want to subtract, then we can just grab the item based on the index and subtract the quantity from the quantity that we passed in. Now, let's pretend in the case of the stone, we were to remove all 10 pieces of it. We would be left with zero in their inventory, so we need to remove the item completely. So for this, we'll write a check and we'll use the item remove function and we'll pass in the index variable. This function is more of an internal function and we can get away with just passing in the index and not the name. This function will use the array delete command, which is built into GameMaker, and it will also handle removing and shifting the array for us. Now with that out of the way, let's return to the object inventory's create event and remove a few of the items. First, let's remove two pieces of wood, and then we'll remove 10 pieces of stone. Don't forget, we'll use a show debug message to show our inventory. And now if we run our game and keep an eye on the output tab, we should only have three pieces of wood left. If you do, this is great because it means that our inventory system is now working and we can start using this within our games. Now let's actually switch over to coding the user interface for the inventory system. I already have a user interface designed, so let's talk about the layout and the variables that we'll be using. This design has been created for a user interface layer that is at least 1280 by 720. This means that if I were to look at the user interface on my phone, it probably wouldn't look very good and I would need to go back to the drawing board. So in that case, my recommendation would be to start with a smaller user interface and scale up based on the selected resolution. But in this video right here, we're only going to be using the 1280 by 720 design, so we can just ignore the rest. So let's actually talk about what's in front of us right now. We have some padding that goes all the way around the user interface, which is about 64 pixels. The border cells also have a size of 8 pixels wide. We also have a statistics section, which is about 320 pixels wide. Then we have a separator, and our inventory boxes start at 48 pixels from that separator. 
Each of the box is 64 pixels wide and also in height. And each box also has a separator of 16 pixels between them. Now knowing all of this, we'll switch back to GameMaker and don't worry, I've already gone ahead and created all the variables that we just talked about and I filled in their values. And before we get into anything else, let's talk about the few scripts that we're going to be using. We have a draw set function that allows me to set the color and the alpha in a single call. We also have a draw reset that will reset the color and alpha for me. And we have a text align function that allows me to set the horizontal and vertical alignment in a single call. Now with the functions out of the way, let's create a new font. I'm going to name this font fn underscore Ubuntu. When I open it up, I'm going to have to select the font from the dropdown. Once I've selected my font, I'm going to change the font size to 24, and now I can close my font window. Let's switch over to the object inventory and specifically the create event. First, we're going to need to tell GameMaker the size of the user interface. We can do this by using a function called display set GUI size. We'll pass in the width and height. If we don't do this, a game maker will take the room dimensions or our viewport dimensions and use that for the size of the user interface. Now let's switch over to the draw GUI event. When we draw anything on the user interface, we have to start from the bottom and build each layer on top. So let's think of this like building a house. First, we need to start with the foundation and then continue building up from there. Also, to save some typing, I'm going to take the displayed width and height and store them into two variables. Now first, let's draw the shadow for our interface. We'll set the draw color to black and the alpha to 0.2. For the rectangle, we'll start with the padding X and then add the border size. For the Y position, we'll start with the padding Y and add the border size as well. For the x2, we'll use the g-width variable, subtracting the padding width, and then adding the border size as an offset. We'll do the same for the y2 position, but use the corresponding y variables. Now let's draw the outside rectangle. We'll set the color to our border color, and the alpha to 1. For the x and y positions, we'll set them to our padding x and padding y. For the x2 and y2 positions, we'll use the g-width and g-height variables, subtracting the padding. Now, for the inner rectangle, we'll set the color of our background and the alpha to 1. We can pretty much do what we did above, but for the x position, we'll change it to be padding x plus the border size, and then padding y plus the border size. Again, we'll subtract the border size from both the x2 and y2 positions. Now let's also draw the horizontal line that splits our two panels. We'll set the color to our border color and the alpha to 1. For the rectangle, we'll use the padding X plus the panel left to get the starting position. For the Y position, we want to be at the top of the box, so that means we'll use the Y padding plus the border size. For the X2 positions, we only want to move over a little bit, so we'll take the original X position and then add the border size. For the height, we'll go all the way down to the bottom of the screen and bring it back up by subtracting the padding and the border size. Now when we run our game, we should be able to see what it looks like. It's starting to come together nicely, so now let's take another step and add some text to the screen. Let's use the draw set font command to change our font to the Ubuntu font that we just created. We should also align our text so that is to the left and at the top. Now let's draw the shadow of our text. First, we'll change the color to black and the alpha to 0.5. For the text X position, we'll use the padding X, then we'll take the border size and multiply it by three to move it over quite a bit, and now let's offset it by four. For the Y position, again, we'll use the padding Y and take the border size multiplied by four, and then we'll add the offset once again of four. We'll end the draw text command with the word of stats. And now we can copy and paste this to get the final wording. We'll change the text to white and the alpha to one, and we'll also remove the offsets. Now, if we copy both of these commands and paste them below, we'll fix them up for the word inventory. We'll change the X position to include the size of our panel as well, 
and again we'll move it all the way over by the border size and also the inventory margin which is 48 pixels. Now if we look at our game again our inventory screen is coming along nicely. Let's add the inventory boxes that's going to be holding the items. In the create event I added two variables called inventory columns and inventory rows. This is going to determine how many rows and columns we can display on our screen. Back into the draw GUI, we need to first loop through the rows and calculate the starting position for the Y component. Let's start off by taking the padding Y plus the border size multiplied by 13 to move it down quite a bit. Then we'll take the current row multiplied by the inventory margin and box padding. We need to replicate this but for the X position using the columns now. The X position is a little bit different where we have to take the padding X plus the panel left plus the border size plus the inventory padding and then we'll add the current column multiplied by the inventory margin and box padding. Let's fix the missing plus sign and now we can draw the shadow of each box. We'll use the draw sprite extended command and pass in the inventory box sprite. For the X position, we'll use the position X variable plus four and the Y position again will be the same but for the Y components. We'll finish off the command with the X and Y scale of one, zero for rotation, the color will be set to black and 0.4 for the alpha. Now for the actual box, let's copy and paste what we have above, change the color to white, the alpha to one, and we'll remove the offsets. If we run our game again, you should see the inventory boxes. Now let's actually hook up the inventory system that we created before. The first thing we need to do is calculate the inventory index. We can take the current row multiplied by the number of columns we have, and then we can finally add the current column that we are on. Now this math broken down isn't that scary. Let's pretend we're on the first row of the second column. Using this formula, you can see that the array index would be six. Moving up the scale, it would be seven, then eight, and so on. Now, before we hook these two systems together, I'm gonna to create one more function. This function isn't necessary, but I feel like it fits in with the style of coding that we're using. Let's create a new function in the inventory script called item get. All this function is going to do is pass back the local inventory array. Now we can return to the dry GUI and store the variable into a local variable above the for loops. Now, after we calculated the current inventory index, we can check to see if we have an item at that index. We can do this by ensuring the index is less or equal to the array length of our inventory items. If it is, we can grab the inventory item from our array and draw the sprite based off of the inventory index variable. Now when we run our game, you can see that we have the piece of wood that was left over in our create function. Let's actually close our game and add a few more items into the inventory. In the create event, I'm going to remove any of the parts where we're subtracting items and then I'm gonna add 10 pieces of fish and four pieces of stick into our system. Running our game again produces a very nice looking inventory system with multiple items. Let's switch back to the draw event and we'll add another if statement below the one we just created. The reason why we're keeping these separate is because after this, we're gonna be adding the hovering of the items. So once again, we'll check the inventory index, and if we fall within the if statement, we'll set the color and the alpha. We'll draw a circle based on the position X plus the inventory box, and the position Y plus the inventory box to get it to the bottom right. For our radius, I'll just use 14 pixels and set the outline defaults. For our text, let's set the color to white and the alpha to one. We'll also align the text to the middle center. Now we can draw the text at the same position as our circle. And for the quantity, let's go into the inventory items array and grab the current item and the quantity parameter. Now, if you run our game, you can see that we have the quantity being displayed, but it looks like it's using the same font as the headers. Let's close our game and switch back. And now we can reset the font with a draw set font command and pass in a negative one. Let's rerun our game and you can see it's looking pretty good, but now we're gonna add highlighting into the inventory system. 
In order to do this, we're going to need to capture the mouse position. But since we're drawing on the graphical user interface layer, this means that we need to capture it on that layer and not the room. Let's scroll up and create two new variables. We'll create a variable called MX, which will be the device mouse X to GUI. And we'll also use the MY variable, which will be the device mouse Y to GUI function. Now, before we draw our quantity, let's also check to see that we're hovering over an item. If the mouse's X position is between our position X and position X plus inventory box, and our mouse's Y position is in between the position Y and position Y plus inventory box, then we know that the mouse is in between one of our squares. So in that case, we'll set our color to the inventory highlight color and the alpha to 0 0.2. We'll draw a rectangle using the position X and Y, and we'll also use the position X plus inventory box and position Y plus the inventory box. Finally, let's also make sure that we reset any of our draw calls. And now if we run our game, we can hover over the items and have a nice highlighting effect. The final step for this is going to be allowing us to actually click on some of these inventory items. Luckily, we've already coded everything that we needed. So let's copy a good chunk of the draw event and switch over to the step event. Let's paste it in here and clean up some of this code. We're going to be deleting the drawing of the quantity, the drawing of the sprite, and the boxes, the shadows, and highlighting. When we're all done, the cleaned up version will look something like this. Now first, let's wrap everything inside a check to see if we're clicking the left mouse button. Once we've clicked our button, we can check the position of the mouse to see if it's between the boxes. Again, we'll calculate the inventory index here. Now, if the index is less or equal to the array, we want to use one of the items. For now, we'll just use a show debug message and show that we're using one of the items. Let's also subtract the item from our inventory by using the item subtract function. We'll pass in the inventory array, select the current item based on the inventory index, and then selecting the name. For the quantity that we want to remove, we'll just set it to one. On the else statement, meaning we click somewhere that didn't have an inventory item, we can just throw up a little message saying that there is no inventory item here. Now, if we run our game again, we should be able to hover over the icons and click on them. You can keep an eye on the output tab to see that you're clicking on different items, and also the quantity is going down. Now that brings the tutorial to a close. I know it was a long video and a lot to take in, but I hope that I've taught you a few things. I feel like this was an extremely good base for an inventory system, and I cannot wait to see what you do with it. Remember, you can download the full source code below from the links in the description. Once again, this has been Mickey, and I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>